Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about href lang tags and how to use them to enhance your international SEO. So in this video, you'll learn about what href lang tags are about and what the benefits are to your international SEO. You'll also learn some of the best practices around how to use href lang tags on your website. Let's get started. So what are hreflang tags? hreflang tags are basically HTML attributes that specify a web page's language and or geographical targeting. And that guides search engines to show the correct version of a piece of content to a specific user based on their language and or location. So it basically keeps it very crystal clear as to what page, what piece of content goes to which audience. And you'll see a bit more how that works. So here's an example of an hreflang tag. It's a bit like uh, HTML code, and you'll see that there's a, a link type, and you'll see the bolded piece is the hreflang um, language region identifier. In this case, it's ENGB, which translates to English UK. So this type of attribute, hreflang tags, was introduced by Google in December 2011. So quite a while ago, over a decade or so. And the hreflang tag is a signal to search engines that recommends how to interpret the content on that page. And it's not a directive, so it's a not it's not a must follow. So search engines can decide whether or not to follow that if they so choose. You can use hreflang tags for just a language, just a region, or both a country uh, and language. Uh, so you can basically have three different types, if you if you will depending on your company's, your brand's preferences and how you wish to target. Now this hreflang tag actually goes in the head section of a website on each page when you uh, are doing international SEO. So here's an example of jabra.co.uk and in the source code, um, I just highlighted the hreflang tags. And you'll see there's so many different types because Jabra is an international organization in many different countries. So it has different websites, one for each of the countries and language pairs that it might be targeting. So why are hreflang tags important? It's a really great question. Uh, there's different reasons. Now, firstly, it's about correctly uh, displaying the language. So it ensures that the users in specific countries and areas see the content in their preferred language. For example, someone in France speaking French will land on the French version of the content if there is a version like that on the site. And it also avoids duplicate content. So it differentiates regional versions to prevent duplicate content issues, which can actually hurt your SEO. So let's say there's like the English US version and the English UK version, they might differ slightly because of the spellings, uh, the cultural references, the prices, things like that. Uh, so we want to avoid duplicate content at all costs because it harms user experience and ultimately it can hurt the rankings in search engines. It also helps with targeted search results. So it directs users to relevant regional or and or language specific site versions. So it brings them to the right page that's relevant to them. And that leads to increased visibility because it, it boosts the rankings um, of these pages in international markets by aligning with the local preferences of that market. Um, it also leads to higher conversion rates because when someone lands on a page of content that's in their language and for their you know, culture or their country, um, then it, it can increase the engagement rate and conversions uh, of whatever products or services they might be buying. So that obviously improves the user experience. Um, it basically um, provides a seamless browsing experience from searching in Google to landing on the page to purchasing what they want to purchase. Depends on their region and or language. 
So let's talk about different combinations um, and configurations. So a, lang a country can have actually multiple languages. Um, it depends on the country, but let's just take UK, for example. Um, and this by no means is a, a you know, complete picture of it. There's many, many other languages that are spoken in the UK. But uh, some of the main ones to mention, English, French, Spanish, um, and these could be page, different versions of a page that someone can land on. Now, a language can be spoken in multiple countries. For example, English can be spoken in the UK, Canada, US, Australia, New Zealand, and many, many other countries. So you might want to have a, a website that targets different countries, but still in English. And then a language may have different dialects across different countries. For example, in French, you have French Canadian um, and you have French France. Uh, so there's different versions and they might have cultural differences and spellings and sayings and whatnot. So let's talk about the differences between canonicalization versus hreflang because this can be a common confusion point. Now, canonicalization is a tool that's used to specify which page out of set of duplicate pages or highly similar pages to return in the res search results. So let's say you have five pages and they're basically the same thing or targeting the same topic. You want to tell Google which one of those five pages to return in, in the search results. Otherwise, they'll start competing for each other and cause issues in rankings. Now, hreflang on the other hand, is used for only language targeting and or country targeting. So let's say you have different content, but each content may, might be slightly different in terms of um, which country it's for or which language it's for. And that's where hreflang comes in. Now you can use these two alongside in parallel, highly recommended, because you might have duplicate content for a specific language country pair. So that's why using them in tandem is important. So how do hreflangs actually work? So you have a language region pair, and I showed you a little code snippet earlier, and that kind of highlighted how it looks like. So here are a few examples. So we obviously have the ENGB, so English UK, and then we have, let's say, FRCA, which is French and Canada, and then we have ESUS, so Spanish language in the United States. And there's many, many, many others out there. Um, you just need to look at uh, the, the ISO codes. So that brings us to the best practices. So one of the things that's really important to recognize with hreflang tags is their bi-directionality nature. And that basically means that on every language, on every page, if you're using hreflang tags, it needs to reference the other pages that uh, it has alternative versions to, um, alternative languages, alternative regions, etc. So you want to ensure that there's a mutual referencing between the languages or between the regions. So um, making sure page A references page B and vice versa. So check that all the related pages correctly include each other's hreflang tags. And make sure that if you update any content or add any translations or whatnot, make sure you update the hreflang tags uh, to avoid any errors or issues. Another important point is the self-referential nature of hreflang tags. You want to make sure that each and every single page, if you're using hreflang, references itself. So always include uh, hreflang tag on a page that is itself. Just like canonicals, if it doesn't have any duplicate content, basically the canonical will just be that page. So ensure that that tag matches the page's language and region as well. Let's talk about X default tags. So instead of using a language region pair, you can also have an in addition to those, an X default tag. And this basically um, is for any other preferences. So let's say you just have English and French that targets UK. What about someone who lands um, on the page from Germany who speaks German? Which one of those will they land on by default? That's where X default comes in. And it basically outlines and highlights which 
default language and or country uh, of the version of the page will that person land on. So here's an example on bmw.com, you can see that the X default hreflang tag is for the English version of their website. You'll see uh, right here, so www.bmw.com slash en slash index.html. And that's uh, the default one for ones for languages and countries that they don't have hreflang tags for. Let's talk about some imp implementation methods. So how do we actually install the hreflang on the site? There's different methods. You can do the manual way, which is the HTML code copy and pasted in the head section of the page. You can do that um, million, like so many different ways, uh, or you can give it to the developer to do. You can also have an XML sitemap that has the um, hreflangs in there. Um, or you can use a CMS plugin. So if you use WordPress or Squarespace or Wix or Shopify, if you use a multilingual plugin, it automatically will add the hreflang tags in there correctly. So here's an example of an XML sitemap and the hreflang versions in there. So we have an example.com slash English slash page.html page. And you'll see there's a German version a Swiss German version and an English version um, on there. So that's how that would look. Now, as I hinted earlier, it's always good to align the href, lang tags and canonicals, use them at the same time um, to prevent any duplicate content issues that might occur within a specific uh, language and region pair. So make sure also, if you don't have any duplicates, um, each canonical tag points to the preferred version of the page and indicates the authoritative version of the multilingual content. So you might have like some duplicate content within specific language. You need a canonical to specify which one of those duplicate pages to return and search engines. You also want to have accurate language and region codes. So make sure you look up the ISO language and country codes so that you use the correct ones and avoid using any deprecated or invalid ones because they might have been floating around the net. So make sure you double check before you use them. So thanks so much for watching this video about href lang tags. If you have any sort of questions, please do ask and do make sure to check out the other videos on our YouTube channel, as well as our learn SEO hub at hikeseo.co slash learn for many different articles on uh, SEO. And also, if you haven't yet tried Hike SEO, try it because it has amazing features for SEO performance. And it's perfectly designed for the beginner in mind for small business owners, as well as agencies who uh, serve small businesses and beginners, and has a wealth of different tools and things that you can use to enhance your SEO and get started right away. All right, I will see you there. Have a great day.